what's new on the Burlington waterfront. Hey, now it's happening at the waterfront on Lake Champlain. Whatever the weather, there's much to do on the new waterfront, the Burlington waterfront. Good morning and welcome to my show on the waterfront. My name is Melinda Moulton and I am your host. And today I am so excited to talk to Tori Jones, who is the development director of ACLU Vermont. Tori, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Melinda. It's great to be with you. It's good to be with you too. I've been so excited to have this interview and to learn all about you and the work you're doing at ACLU and especially with what's going on in our world with voting rights and all the things that are going on. So this is gonna be a great half hour, folks. And um, so thank you for tuning in and for, uh, and for learning about Tori's story and all of her great work. So let's just start right off with Tori. Tell me a little bit about your life. Where do you hail from? A little bit about who you are. Sure, well, thanks so much for having me. It's really a pleasure and I've really enjoyed working with you. And so this is such a special time. Um, yeah, so I came to Vermont, as many have, from uh, out of state. I went to UVM. I'm originally from Silver Spring, Maryland, just outside D.C., um, and I'm a child of two public educators. My mom was an early childhood interventionist, and my dad was an elementary school principal. Um, so education and advocacy have always been really important to me, and even getting a little choked up talking about it, because um, advocacy and advocating for children and immigrant communities where I grew up has just been a forefront of my mind and my life for, for over 35 years. So um, when I was looking at colleges, I knew that I wanted to be in New England. And my mom tells the story so well that the first time I stepped on the UVM campus, she knew that was you know where I'd end up, which is such a special story. I had a wonderful experience at UVM. I can't say enough things. I was a graduate of the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. That was a transformational experience for me. Um, and I, I spent my time actually on my thesis. Um, this is a common thread, you know, throughout my life where activism is important to me and what has led me here to the ACLU. Um, I focused my thesis on the demilitarization of Vieques, Puerto Rico. And a lot of people think of Puerto Rico, yeah, it's a, you know, U.S. territory, beaches, really nice place to vacation. Um, but a common tale that people don't know about is a lot of islands territories across the globe have been used for military testing facilities and um, Vieques, Puerto Rico is an island off of the mainland of Puerto Rico. It's an archipelago um, and I went down there with a group of UVM students several times to do research and talk with community members and understand what this militarization of their homeland and their island meant to them and what they experienced. It was militarized for over 50 years um, and people relocated from World War II up until the Bush, the second Bush administration. It's one of the things that I think he did a good job on was actually um, relocating, removing the military from that island so people could resume some normalcy to their lives. Um, so to me, that was, you know, that experience was really because of UVM and because of the education I had there. Um, and activism was always something that was important to me growing up outside DC. Um, going to rallies, going to protests, the Iraq War, um, the Million Mom March, all of these things that I did with my parents and um, my community growing up. And so Vermont was a really special place for me, and I've actually been here ever since. And my first job out of UVM was working for Congressman Welch. Uh, and that was, again, another really special transform transformative experience for me, where I got to work alongside Vermonters, help them with problems with the federal government, um, and just be an advocate for Vermonters. And that's something that's really been special for me in my life. What a beautiful, what a beautiful um, childhood and growing up experience you had with two educators and, and then coming to UVM, yeah. going to all the rallies and becoming sort of radicalized. <laughs> a little like bit. All the things that are right. And then working for Peter Welsh. Talk to us a little bit about that experience of working yeah. with Peter, who is trying so hard uh, you know, in the house to to create the change that we need for our world. Talk a little bit about working for him. Yeah, I, I can't, I have to say that, you know, Congressman Welch is, is one of the most empathetic and supportive um, people and leaders. We're, we're so lucky to have him in office. And um, 
you know, I was 22 right out of college and experiencing uh, the professional world and, and a seri very serious, important job right, right off the bat. Um, but it was really grounded in, you know, authentic support and communication with Vermonters. Um, we were in the Burlington office, so we were doing most of that casework and advocacy with, you know, organizations and towns and individuals, and our DC office was focused on the legislative side. Um, but I was able to travel with Congressman Welch across Vermont in communities. We set up Congress in your community gatherings at general stores and farmers markets and um, town centers and really getting to know what Vermont is all about. And, you know, I certainly know that my experience in Burlington at UVM was limited. And so being able to travel to all corners of the state and hear what Vermonters were experiencing really, again, helped me, um, it really brought together my personal background in education and advocacy and understanding communities and sense of place. And we have such a special state, um, but we really need to make sure what we're hearing from all voices. Um, and I felt like answering the phones, being in community, traveling with him, I was able to um, get a better understanding of our state, both the opportunities that we have, but also the challenges that many people face. So Tori, as, as, a, as a young person, um, as a professional woman, how are you feeling about present day and where we are with issues like the w women's issues and where we are with voting rights and, the, and our democracy? And certainly most important of everything is climate change. I would love to hear your perspective growing up in this world. Uh, I'm 71 years old. I was, I was radicalized in the 60s and tried to make changes with the civil rights movement, the women's movement. Um, uh, but, you know, you're, you're, you're coming into your own, into your own leadership, and your generation is going to be the next group of leaders if you're not already. And how are you feeling about the state of our world right now? Thanks for that. Yeah, it's a really challenging time. I mean, across, every, you know, it, as you said, every segment of our experience is, is being challenged in ways that I think for my generation, um, you know, we, we haven't experienced in the same way, you know, I'm a child of the 80s. And, um, and so I'm, you know, in my mid to late 30s at this point, I've, I've seen a lot. I mean, I remember world wars going on, you know, in in the 90s when I was reading Time for Kids in elementary school and, you know, we have um, significant problems with, you know, mass shootings and the Columbine era and all of that going through that and then climate change. I was an environmental studies major at UVM. That is something that is extremely important to me and, and we're seeing the effects of it. I mean, look at just this week in Vermont, our weather has, it was colder, um, on Christmas, I'm sorry, it was colder this week in July than it was at Christmas of December 2020. So we're seeing these incredible changes um, and people are stressed, you know, people are frustrated both um, with, you know, their rights in question, they, people aren't feeling safe in their communities. Um, we've had this racial reckoning that we've seen before, but it's different this time. Um, and I didn't live through the 60s and through the civil rights era. Um, but I've read a lot about it. I'm a student. I'm a lifelong student. I'm always doing the work and trying to understand history and where we are today. Um, but it's a really scary time. You know, trans rights are being questioned and taken away, reproductive rights. Um, so I'm really, personally, I'm really I'm appreciative of the opportunity to be a member of the ACLU staff and to be working with, you know, fantastic supporters like you and others throughout our, our state and community and the partners that I'm making, partnerships I'm making across the country with other ACLU affiliates, because we all really need to get involved. Um, to me, that was something that my family really emulated growing up as working as educators, but also being involved in civic organizations in our community. And, and again, as a white woman, I understand that I have had a different experience than many people, and I'm, I'm I live with that um, privilege as a white woman. But I also feel as though how we can get involved is really the best way forward. Being educated and and doing our work both internally in our communities um, and at, at our workplaces. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to speak on behalf of the ACLU, meet with people across Vermont hear their experiences, tell them about the important work that we're doing here, um, because it really is gonna take all of us if we want to 
believe and feel that we the people means all of us, we really have to all start doing the work together. Thank you for that, Tori. You know, it is your generation that's moving into leadership. Um, and are you feeling confident that the majority of this country seem to be on the right side of where we need to be going? Um, and also, I want to understand how you're viewing this, this effort to, to really destroy voting rights, uh, to marginalize um, you know, our, our black and brown communities around this country. And most of those battles are probably going to be fought by the ACLU. Uh, but I was listening to, um, to, to some uh, folks talk about it yesterday on the news. And, um, you, know, there's, you know, there's not a whole lot that we can do uh, but there are some things that we can do. But where where do you fall on that sure. of, of sort of your your hopefulness and your feeling that 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 we've got this and that we'll be able to get through the next five or six years and, and reestablish ourselves in some form or fashion as a leader of the world for democracy and civil rights and and all the other human rights that we've believed in all these years? Yeah, absolutely. I always believe that you know the children are our future and that we need to start as early as early childhood intervention work to make sure that our young people you know have food and that they have um, you know education and they have a, a stable home and all of those things that they need in order to be you know thriving young people and make their way in the world. It starts with babies um, and making sure that we're investing in those those resources and those um, organizations that are doing such important work, teachers and um, you know, all, of the, all of the people that are working with young people and children. But um, yeah, I'm definitely concerned. I, I do feel very inspired by young people to this day. I mean, they are the ones that are taking to social media, they're protesting, they're um, educating their elders and their communities and their Act, you know, activating as, as middle school, high school age students to make sure that they can hang Black Lives Matter flag at their school, that they're hanging the pride flag at school, that they're marching in support of pride and trans students and their peers, and that they um, feel they're coming together as young people. And I'm so inspired by that. We're so eager that, you know, COVID is sort of starting to, to pass, that we're opening up our um, office again and that we're able to do community events because we really are so eager after this pandemic to get back into communities um, in person and engage with young people and make sure that they feel like they have resources. Um, you know, the ACLU, we, we can't do everything, but we certainly want to make sure that we're um, ad advocating for young people and that we're educating them about democracy and knowing their rights when they're out protesting. Um, there's a lot of work to be done, but it really, as I said, it's going to take all of us, but it also is going to take maybe some of our, our elders, our more senior leadership folks to look out at the crowd, look out at the younger generations, whether it be my generation that is up and coming and rising and taking on those leadership positions, certainly, but looking to our young people and asking them, like, what's going on in your world? How is this affecting you? What can we learn from those those different uh, voices. Um, and so it is, a, it is a scary time in many ways, but I'm always inspired. I was just watching the news last night um, and I saw that the president of the American Federation of Teachers was on CNN talking about, you know, her concern with this critical race theory and, and banning education, our history in, in schools across the country, even New Hampshire, our neighbors, to the east are have experience, are experiencing that that bill just passed and their governor signed it into law and you know it's such a disappointment and it's terrible that we're not able some places are fearful of you know, preventing education educators from speaking about our past about white supremacy culture about uh, slavery and racism and it's so important that we we honor you know we recognize the past, we learn from the past, and that we take those learnings and lessons and, and do better um, and make sure that we are upholding the Constitution and that we live in a place that's just and inclusive of all. Well, that's white supremacy in its, in its worst form right there, and it's also the beginnings of fascism. I mean, just follow the fascism playbook, and everything that's going on is sort of this, you know, putting into place 
uh, the, the recipe. Um, I don't even want to call it a recipe, more of the, you know, the witch's brew or although I love witches. Yeah, something, something is definitely stirring and it's, it's, un, it's very um, unnerving and disconcerting, very um, but I can, yep. go for it. Well, unsettling and, and, you know, my generation was a radical generation. I mean, we were only 17% of our generation were part of that movement. And now we have 60 to 70% of our country that's part of this movement. So there's more people actually in this country yeah. that believe in the right direction. We're back in my day, it was only 17% of my generation that were part of the, the 60s revolution. But, um, you know, did you, did you study civics in school? Did they give you, did you have civics classes when you were in? It wasn't civics. I actually had a, a pretty lousy U.S. history uh, class in ninth grade. Um, but, uh, you know, we had different, we had history throughout my, my public school education and we really didn't learn about civics enough. And I think it's been a little bit of my own education. And, um, but I absolutely think that there's, there's a need for that and that the ACLU does a great job of educating um, everyone about knowing their rights, whether you're out protesting or just living your day-to-day -day life. You know, what are your rights and making sure that um, if that's important to you, that you are, that we are protecting civil liberties. Well, you know, and it's so interesting. They can try to stop people from, you know, learning of our children, uh, you know, but with social media, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's, it's, it's out there and right. it's really up to the parents to make sure that the children learn. And I, and I think it's, I think it's horrific that, that we want to change the history of this country um, because of the, the basically the white supremacist uh, movement. Yeah, um, it's but, really disturbing. But at the end of the day, we have social media. So uh, that we did, if, if this had happened back in our, well, it was happening back in, in my day as well, where they suppressed history, um, you know, to just skew it in the way that, um, that people, um, that white people wanted to skew it um, at the end of the day. But we have social media now. So hopefully, mm -hmm we can educate our, our children in other ways. And the ACLU having a role, a role in that is really, is really important. So let's segue. So thank you for that. Yeah. I wanted to hear your voice. I'm thinking, you know, Tori, I may do a show with young, with young um, uh, middle and high school students. I may start with the middle school and get some, some students on my show to see what, how they're looking at all of this. And that really has inspired me to do that. But let us segue to the sure. ACLU Vermont, which is where you've just started your new job as the development yes. manager. And by the way, I want to let my viewers know that I am a new board member of ACLU <laughs> Vermont. So Tori and I have been working together and, um, and I've been loving my experience on this board. So let, let's talk to you, let's talk a little bit about um, the ACLU. Tell us a little bit about what the American Civil Liberties Union is where it came from, how it started. Um, and I think Absolutely. we have probably another, probably 13 minutes left of our show. So let's focus sure. on this great organization. Great, well, and I, I'll say a lot of people like the ACLU, but when you ask, you know, what do we do? Sometimes people don't really know. So I'm happy to um, tell you all a little bit more about what we do and what we do here in Vermont. So the ACLU has been around for over a hundred years. Uh, we are dedicated to advancing the civil rights and civil liberties of all people, all Vermonters, and making sure that we're supporting healthy and vibrant communities and resilient communities statewide. So here in Vermont, we've been a chapter or an affiliate of the National ACLU for over 50 years. And we work to realize the promise of justice and equality for all people with a special emphasis on marginalized populations and Vermont's most vulnerable people. Um, so the ACLU, as I said, we're an affiliate of the National ACLU. There are um, affiliates in all 50 states, as well as Puerto Rico and DC. Um, and every day we work to safeguard and strengthen the foundations of our democracy, so the constitution. Um, we're guardians of liberty. We wanna make sure that everyone um, is protected under those civil rights and civil liberties. And we're the only multi-issue, multidisciplinary organization dedicated to civil liberties in Vermont. We're in courthouses with our legal team. We are in state houses advocate, advocating for policy changes. We are in communities with grassroots organizers, talking with community members, working with partner organizations, um, speaking with town officials, and um, really deeply in communities with individuals, trying to understand the challenges 
that Vermonters face regarding civil liberties and civil rights and working to make changes so that we can all live in peace and live in a just and equitable state. Thank you so much for that. That's perfectly, that's perfect, that's perfect. Um, it explains a lot. I mean, basically from my vantage point, the, AC, the ACLU, ACLU Vermont, helps to protect those who don't have a voice, right? It's definitely some, one of the major things that we do, yes. Protects their, the, the liberties and the rights of people who can't afford lawyers and go off and, and fight for their rights because they, they can't. They don't have the resources. And the ACLU steps in and fights that fight if they believe that their liberties are being challenged. So let's talk you know, a little bit about what are the top few issues that, uh, that you all are working on right now. Absolutely. And, and we, we work on a multitude of issues and it is constantly changing. And over 100 years as a national organization, 50 years, we've seen a lot, we've done a lot, but we have a fantastic team and, of you know, lawyers and policy advocates and grassroots organizers and administrative staff and development professionals. Everyone's doing a fantastic job really advocating for these issues. So as far as our top issues right now, we are in the midst of a smart justice campaign. This is a national ACLU campaign that is working to reduce the prison population um, across the country and specifically here in Vermont by 50% and also combat racial disparities in the criminal legal system. I'm happy to chat a little bit more about that in a minute, but I wanted to cover a few more of the issues that we're working on. We're also looking at reimagining policing and what that means here in Vermont. We really wanna increase accountability, both through litigation and legislation, um, and really look at the scope of policing in Vermont and make sure that it's really, um, helping and additive to public safety and, commun and supporting communities and supporting Vermonters. Um, and we've seen instances of that not being the case. Um, in Vermont last year, Vermont passed the strongest use of force law in the country. So limiting the use of force by police against, um, against the public, against individuals. And again, we wanna make sure that people's rights are protected and that can change in a lot of different ways, but we and look different in different situations. But again, ultimately, we want to make sure that people's civil rights and civil liberties are protected. So we do want to reduce the law, the footprint of law enforcement, and we're looking into and advocating for pilot programs in, pl in place of police for mental health services. So making sure that in instances where someone might be having a mental health crisis or need someone to talk to, that instead of sending armed police, we're sending in mental health professionals who can de-escalate and support, support these individuals and support these communities rather than, you know, the impact that police can have is not always positive. Um, we're also advocates for decriminalizing uh, and legalizing cannabis, marijuana, making sure that we're not imprisoning people who have minor offenses or nonviolent offenses and making sure that we can support them in their recovery um, and help them be better community members through restorative justice or other mechanisms that will help return them to the community and be thriving members of our communities. And finally, I just wanted to mention we're working very closely with Planned Parenthood on reproductive freedom. We're actually starting a campaign this fall um, in support of Proposition 5, which would enshrine reproductive liberty in the Vermont Constitution. And you've talked a little bit about um, our concerns around reproductive rights being in question. State, you know, states across the country are passing um, bans on abortion, and we're worried about Roe v. Wade in the Supreme Court. Um, Vermont is really working hard to make sure that we have those protections here for our people, and that if we can pass Prop 5, we can enshrine it in our Vermont Constitution so that abortion will be legal in Vermont. Um, and so that's something we're really excited about this coming year. And just finally, racial justice has been on the forefront of people's minds so much so over the last year, after the George Floyd murder and this racial reckoning we've had over the last year and countless other BIPOC members of our community being killed either at the hands of police or other um, individuals. So racial justice is something that runs through all of our work here in Vermont and nationally with the ACLU. We really can't advocate for civil rights and civil liberties if we're not looking at racial injustice. 
Um, and uh, we do that work here internally at the ACLU with our equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging programming and training. So we're doing that work here as staff. We want to be better. We're always learning. Um, and we, we want to make sure that we're, again, partnering with organizations that have that focus on EDIB so that we can um, be, be doing our best work, learning from each other, learning from those impacted and marginalized communities, um, and making sure that we're furthering those civil rights for everyone. Thank you for that, Tori. I mean, in Vermont, you know, we think that we're so progressive and, um, and, and that we care about civil liberties, but in Vermont, we have, we have issues just like other places in the country. Um, and there, is po there are pockets of deep racism in this state. And, um, and so I really honor this work uh, and, and honor you for, for doing it. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is I know that the organization has grown quite a bit. So can you talk a little bit about how it's grown in the last couple of years under the leadership of Duff, Duff Lyall, who is now the new, uh, he's been the executive director for six years now. And yeah, how five years. Yeah, and how he is, five years, and how he is, Duff has transformed this organization as the executive director and, um, and some, of the, some of the new positions that you've filled to help do this work. Absolutely, we're really excited. Um, so just last month, we announced the uh, creation of six new staff positions in our legal advocacy and communication programs. Uh, including within that six, four new hires, as well as the promotion of two of our staff attorneys to um, now uh, legal director and general counsel. Um, so we're really excited for those colleagues that are, that are growing in our organization. Um, so about five years ago, our organization, ACLU of Vermont, was only about five full-time staff. We had two legal staff, we had some administrative staff and an executive director. And when our new executive director came on, uh, James Duff Lyle, five years ago, it was also a time in which um, the 2016 election had just occurred and there was momentum uh, both nationally and here in Vermont around, we need to uphold and protect our democracy and our values and civil rights and civil liberties are being called into question more so than ever in our recent history. And so with that support, with folks contributing and getting involved and, and activating, the ACLU has grown nationally and, and has also grown here in Vermont. So it is all of that support coming together to, that allows us to grow and add additional staff positions because the reality is the issues and the work is still, is still needed. We still have, need to have more impact here in Vermont because we're continuing to see these problems occurring. More than ever. More than ever. So we're adding these new staff positions. We're going to be adding two new legal and advocacy fellows. So these will be um, sort of new positions coming right out of law school or grad school for young civil rights ad activists and uh, lawyers to be able to help do that work, create more um, capacity to do that legal and advocacy work here in Vermont. We've also upped our communications and public education staff. So this is gonna allow us, we went from five full-time staff about five years ago, to now we're gonna be going up to 13. Um, but this is because of a 70% increase in Vermont support over the past year. So this is possible because of Vermonters speaking up and saying, we need the ACLU, please help. We wanna be a part of this solution. So those are our members, our supporters, our volunteers, our community members who are saying they wanna help you know, how can they help? And again, by having more staff, by having more impact, we can really start to make sure that our civil rights and civil liberties are protected and that everyone can live in peace here in Vermont. And that's what we're all really trying to, to enjoy and feel safe in our community. So Tori, as we close here, can we share with our viewers how they can participate and give to the ACLU Vermont? Uh, what are the methods for them to give? No amount is too small. To my viewers out there, if you support the work of protecting the civil liberties of all, Amer of all Vermonters, this is an organization that you, that you may want to contribute to, and no contribution is too small. Um, so, Tori, can you give that information of how people can donate to ACLU Vermont? Absolutely. Thanks, Melinda. So, really, it's about getting involved and in whatever that looks like for you. I really talk about time, talent, and treasure. So, if you have capacity to volunteer, please fill out our interest form on our website. You can fill out our smart justice petition. If you would like to see incarceration numbers drop, our goal is to drop that by 50% and we are about 40% uh, 
uh, of that goal. So we're really excited to be pushing forward in that campaign. You can follow us on social media. We're on all social media platforms. Um, and please contact your decision makers in your town, in your statewide elected office. Um, talk to them and, and advocate for the issues that you care about. And you can always contact us as well. Reach out to us on social media or on our website. And if you need assistance, you can certainly do that as well. Um, and if you are able to make a financial contribution, as Melinda said, no amount is too small. We really appreciate that commitment that you're making with your gift. Um, and we just really appreciate everyone speaking up, taking a stand in any way that you can. Um, how do they do? That? How do they do that, Tori? How do they make a donation? Sure. What, so what is your website? ACL yeah. Thank you. We can. You can go to aclu.vt.org/give, and that will take you right to our donation page. You can also become a member if you'd like to be a member of the union. And there's all of that information on our website um, and we're happy to post that link as well. Um, but we just appreciate everyone stepping up and doing their part um, because we the people really means all of us and we're in it together. So thanks again for having me, Melinda. Tori, you're amazing. So aclvt.org. That's it. That's your, that's your website. So aclvt.org folks. Go visit the website. It's a it's a great website. Um, Tori, you know, I'm just so moved by you and your brilliance and your commitment and your strength. And um and thank I you. and I and I wanna I wanna thank you so much for being on my show today and for sharing your story and the work of the ACLU Vermont. And to my viewers, I want you all to have a wonderful rest of the summer. And um I will see you all next month. Goodbye.